Why hello, I'm Simon Jones from HitFilm.com, back with the first in a big series of tutorials about the HitFilm 2 What's Your Idea trailer, which we released at the end of 2012. First up, some handy links. Following the annotations on screen will take you to the trailer itself, in case you haven't already seen it, plus two behind the scenes videos. Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to start at the end by taking a look at how we graded the trailer. There are four distinct parts to the film. The opening shot, the London war sequence, the UFO field sequence, and the musical sequence. The key concept of the trailer is variety, so each part had to have its own identity while still feeling like a single, cohesive production. To achieve this, we picked a key look for the overall film, which could then be tweaked for individual scenes and shots. In the past, I've often had to use grading to fix problems or hide poor quality footage. Anybody that was making no-budget videos back in the pre-mini-DV era will know exactly what I'm talking about. With this trailer, we were lucky to be shooting on a red epic with an experienced DP, so the raw footage already looked pretty damn good. But that's not to say that some grading can't push it that little bit further. We deliberately shot for a very soft, flat look, which would give us maximum latitude in post to play around with the grading. Whatever your camera, it's worth checking around online to see the best way of shooting flat, as this will give you the most options once you get into post. Our secret weapon when grading the trailer was the vibrance effect, which tends to work wonders on flat footage by applying localised sharpening, saturation and contrast, is extremely fast and easy to use, and is capable of creating highly stylized or very natural results, depending on what you want. Let's use this opening shot to examine what vibrance is capable of doing. As you can see, just dragging on the effect, the default properties for vibrance don't look that great, as they've made the shot look all pasty with a lot of unnatural haloing around edges. That's because to get good results from Vibrance, you'll usually want to increase the radius property. This widens the sample region for the effect, so as I increase it, you can see the haloing spreading out and then blending smoothly into the image, until it disappears entirely. I like to put the radius quite high, resulting in a sharper, more defined and contrasty image, but, you know, go for whatever suits your particular shot. The intensity slider drastically changes the Vibrance effect. Drag it to the right and you'll generally get a cooler, bluer, subtler look. Drag it to the left and you'll get a rich, warm, saturated look. The interesting thing about Vibrance is that it does a good job of retaining a natural feel even when pushed to extremes. It also tends to enhance dull areas rather than pushing already vibrant areas too far. For example, compare this heavy use of Vibrance with this alternative, which uses the HSL and contrast effects. The latter results in the entire image being oversaturated and feeling very unnatural. Using Vibrance instead gives a similarly punchy feel while retaining the core characteristics of the original image. If I toggle the Vibrance effect on and off, you can see how it's giving everything in the image better separation, really helping the actress's face to pop out of the background. The Vibrance effect can be made far more drastic by increasing the Iterations property. Higher iterations make the effect far more extreme, Although this can still look really good depending on what you're going for, and the better quality your original footage, the more you're able to push it. For this shot, we settled on a high contrast, warm feel, similar to a typical Hollywood blockbuster. It was still a little too blue, so we then used the color correction wheels effect to pull the mid-tones back towards orange a little. Grading is so often a matter of personal taste, but my general rule of thumb is to adjust the properties until you think it looks cool, and then drop it by a third. That usually ensures that you're not going way too far with your grade, which can then be distracting for an audience. While the shot in general looks good, the grade has inadvertently darkened the actress's eyes. We didn't want this shadowing, as her eyes are so important to getting people's attention with the opening shot of the trailer. So to fix this, I added a couple of grade layers above the main shot, one for each eye. For each grade layer, I then drew a simple oval mask shape over one of the eyes, so that the grade layer would only affect that area. Colour correction wheels were used to tweak the lighting, boosting up the shadows and dropping down the highlights. This removed the shadowy area around the eye socket. It looks way too obvious of course, so the mask needed a good amount of feathering to hide the edges. The eye then loses a bit of contrast due to the alterations, so a simple crush black and whites effect was used to crunch those blacks back down. This brings the contrast back in line with the rest of the face, without bringing back those shadows. You can see how big a difference this makes if I toggle the grade layer on and off. 
Now, rather than hand animate the mask, which would be boring, instead I did a quick optical flow track of the eye movement. This movement was then sent to a new point layer, and the eye grade layer was then parented to that point. A couple of keyframes were needed to adjust the size of the mask, but overall it was a quick and easy process. The same techniques were then used on the other eye. Don't underestimate how useful tracking can be when it comes to grading. Next up, there's the sequence set in a war-torn future London. We wanted a stark, almost black and white, contrasty look that felt like it was shot on grainy film. Let's take a look at the final shot of the sequence. We experimented with some interesting techniques to get the final look. Here's the original ungraded version. You can see it's much flatter and softer. First up, unsharpen was used to increase contrast and sharpness. This works similarly to vibrant, but without affecting colours so much. You can really see how the sharpening brings out the dirt and detail in the actor's skin. The end result was blooming out a little too much, so a colour correction wheels effect was added on beforehand to drop down the highlights slightly. If you look towards the top right of the frame, you can see that without the wheels, the sky and explosion are very washed out. But drop down to about 0.42 in the highlights, and some of that detail comes back. One thing to note is that the order of effects is important, particularly when grading. In this case, if the colour correction wheels are applied after the unsharpen, it doesn't work nearly as well, as the detail has already been lost. It reduces the brightness of the highlights, but no detail is actually recovered. Move it in the list order so that the wheels are processed before the unsharpen, and the results are much better. This is where things get interesting. To give the war sequence a unique look, we restricted its colour palette using the colour map effect. This takes information from one layer and applies it to another. So first up I duplicated the source video layer. I'll take off all the effects from the top layer so that it goes back to the original. I then needed a colour map to use as my new palette. You can use anything you like for this, but I used the four point gradient effect to create a purplish plane going from black through purple to white from left to right. You could also use an imported image created in Photoshop, for example. The colour map effect was then used to take that gradient and apply it to the video layer. The coordinates from property determines how the map is applied to the layer. For example, if I set it to X, you can see that the purple colour map is applied directly along the X axis from left to right. If I set it to luminance instead, the colour map is then assigned to the video according to its brightness. This means that bright areas such as the sky and the back wall receive colours from the right edge of the colour map, the pinks and the whites. Darker areas in the video, such as the gun and her clothing, receive their colours from the left edge of the colour map, such as the dark blues and blacks. To make this a little bit clearer, let's go and alter the colour map gradient to see how it affects our video layer. If I change the white to red, you can see the sky in the background is immediately affected. If I change the black to green, all the darkest areas in the video become green. You can see that the video's colour palette has been taken directly from the gradient. Although this particular example looks rather horrible now, you can probably imagine how it could be used to make a cool heat vision look, useful for any of you working on Predator fan films. Even with this extreme example, you can still turn it into something worthwhile. Rather than leaving it like this, let's change the blend mode of the colour mapped layer to overlay. This reveals some of the original layer underneath. So if I now drop the opacity down to zero, you can see the sharpened version of the base grade that I worked on earlier in this tutorial. If I now raise up the opacity of the colour mapped layer, you can see those dark greens, bright reds and bluey purples starting to infuse the image. As you can see, the video retains its original colours, but is shifted towards the new palette, in this case giving it an almost matrix-like green tint. This sickly green isn't the look we wanted in this trailer though, so I'll switch the gradient back to how it was with black and white at the ends of the gradient. Colour map is hugely powerful once you wrap your head around what it's actually doing. You can use it to really play around intelligently with the appearance of your videos. Additional grade layers were then used to fine tune the look. Saturation was dropped down to 60%, levels was used to balance out the image and brighten it up a bit. And then, finally, film damage was used to add a layer of filmic grain. Effects like film damage in particular are ones that you have to be very careful with. If you overdo it, it's going to start looking very silly very quickly. These same techniques were then applied throughout the sequence, with some shots requiring their own fine tuning. 
Okay, this leads us neatly into the UFO sequence. The gritty, dirty atmosphere of the war sequence cuts straight into the joyous, fresh cornfields of North Norfolk. This was a much simpler grade, aided by the source footage already looking beautiful thanks to our DP Jake Scott. Using the same lenses they use when shooting aliens didn't hurt either. Here's what we started with. Even more so than in the opening shot, the vibrance effect is the secret weapon here. As before, after applying it, the first thing is to ramp the radius right up to avoid any haloing and to increase the sample area. When you're working with high quality footage, you can push the vibrance effect really far. For example, I can stick iterations all the way up to 5, and it still looks great. At a high intensity, it has a cool retro feel. At a low intensity, it gets much warmer and richer, the sun bursting through the top of the frame. For the final version, we went for something considerably less intense, dropping down to just three iterations. On top of this, we used a three-strip colour effect, using it to really boost up the greens in the field, and adding a little bit of extra colour punch. Three-strip simulates the chemical processing used in the early days of Technicolor film, and works particularly well on high-quality footage with a lot of dynamic range. These techniques work just as well once the UFO shows up, combining with the CG lens flares to really make the image pop out of the screen. Continuing our obsession with the vibrance effect, it is also the main element in the grade of the musical sequence. Its impact can be seen particularly strongly on this wide shot. In the original, the flat nature of the image causes the band to disappear slightly into the background, lost in the smoky, hazy environment. Vibrance warms up the image, but it also brings out a huge amount of detail in the band and the hanging curtain at the back of the stage. Highlights take on a fiery orange glow, lending to the burnished retro stylings of the scene. This next shot is another good example of the difference a quick bit of vibrance can make. In the original, you can barely make out the band in the background. With vibrance added, the band is much more visible, and the highlights on the girl's arms and hair are much more engaging. The grading in this sequence really helps to blend the particle effects into the shots, with everything having a unified range and palette. The result is a trailer that skips between wildly different settings, each delineated not only by what's happening, but also by their visual style. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll be taking a look at the field shots, examining in detail how we added particulate dust to the atmosphere. In the meantime, check out our channel because there's many, many more videos and tutorials over there ready and waiting for you to watch. Bye-bye.